How's it going everybody? The voice of Ed Ricker here, and this is VSDC Video Editor Pro Edition version 6.4.2.1.2. And uh, last year I made a video about the free version of VSDC, kind of got you through some of the basic video editing techniques and how to get started with your own first video. This time around, there are a couple new things with VSDC Video Editor Plus. With the Pro version, we have a couple new tools, most notably motion tracking. You may have seen some of my other videos. There was a, a part where maybe I was able to uh, take text or a graphic and then use motion from one of my videos, like a, an object or a scene that was moving, and track that motion onto the text or the graphic and make it all move simultaneously, like as if it was a part of the video. It looks pretty cool if done correctly. And this is something we can do with VSDC. Now, unfortunately, it's exclusive only to the pro version. You cannot use this motion tracking with the free version. Normally, the pro version is about $20 per year, but five of you will win a free pro license code. Type hashtag VSDC down below in a comment and you're automatically entered to win. Also, make sure to check back uh, after a while because last year when I did this, three of you never replied back to redeem your prize. So... <laughs> With that said, we're going to start with a blank project, and if I'm going too fast, refer back to that first video. I call this motion tracking test, and I'm going to be using a frame rate of 30 frames per second and a width of 2.7K, which is the Mavic Mini uh, highest resolution, so 2720 by 1536, and I'm only going to be using Mavic Mini footage, so that's the reason. Finish. Uh, so on the left, we have our Objects Explorer, we have our timeline down here, we have our preview window. I'm going to go to Windows Explorer, and I'm going to point to um, Mavic Mini Clips. Now, I've prepared a few clips to use in this video. Um, some are from Colorado, and some are this glass building in Chapel Hill. And first of all, I'm just going to drag across them all, and then drop them right in the timeline. Now, last year when I made the video, if you were to do something like that, you would have every clip staggered on its own layer. Now we can have multiple clips on one layer, which is awesome. Um, now you may not always want to have them all in one layer. Like right now they're all in one layer and it's almost difficult to see where the cuts are unless you click on them. Um, so for organization's sake, you might still sometimes want to have them staggered. But the fact that we don't need to have 40 layers for 40 clips, if we had that many in the video, uh, kind of uh, means we can have a little more flexibility with the timeline. But anyway, I am gonna stagger a couple of these just to make it easier to see, maybe like that, maybe two and two. I'm also going to expand layer 19 so we can see some of the thumbnail of layer 19 as well as layer 13. Uh, the fact that I have 13 and 19, by the way, means that I've been doing a few things with this project before I started recording. All right, here we go. So we have a couple different clips and a few of them are better candidates than others for motion tracking. Uh, this one right here, the second one we have is Colorado, Mavic Mini, panning left to right and left to right movement or up and down movement is perfect for motion tracking because that's in the X and the Y axes. Much easier for motion tracking to track something moving left and right. If we use a clip like this and I'm tracking something the object that I'm going, or the text that I'm going to be adding into the video that's going to be part of the motion tracking will not scale up as we get closer to it. You know, like when you think about perspective, the size of that object, the perceived size of that object will change and VSDC motion tracking will not account for that. You can choose to manually increase or decrease the size of something to help with that scaling, but that's a lot more tedious. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to work with X and Y movement, primarily X movement. Now, when you're thinking about motion tracking, you want to be able to select and track something that is very easy for the software to pick out and to continue to track over time as the clip proceeds on. So you're thinking about things like maybe the top of this tree or maybe this sign that they're very obvious and, and, and they're, they're not going to be obstructed in the, the clip as the clip goes on. So as this comes into frame, this tree continues to be visible. Uh, we're going to, first of all, scrub through the clip until that tree becomes visible. And I'm going to discard the uh, first part of that clip. And again, refer to my first video if you uh, don't recall how to cut clips and splice them. All right, moving on. And then that tree, when it's about to exit frame, I'm going to cut there again and then get rid of that second part of the clip. Here we go. So now this entire clip 
that tree is in frame. And that's a really good thing to have for motion tracking is to make sure that whatever object you're going to be tracking is in the shot uh, throughout the clip. Makes it a lot easier. So now we're in the clip. We double clipped on the clip. Now we're in the sprite here. And it's really easy. All you gotta do is right click anywhere. In, I mean, it could be anywhere. And create movement map. I'm gonna name it something. I'm gonna name it uh, Colorado 3 because I've already done a few things here. And uh, we got a new window. So this is Motion Tracker. This is the new tool. And you can see you have the timeline here. And red means that nothing has been tracked. Once it turns green, this bar means that we have tracked something. Uh, we have this rectangular red shape with a red dot in the center. And that's going to be the center of our tracking. We want to make the size of the tracking box just a little bit bigger than the object itself with that red dot pretty much in the center of where we want it, okay? And we're at the very beginning of the clip because the, the playhead is all the way at the, at the left. Up here on the upper left, we're gonna start analysis and check it out. It's got it. It has got it. All right, and that stopped. Now, if at any point it lost the object you know, like maybe it couldn't track it after a point, you can manually move and adjust this little tracker window, um, you know, per per frame. And it's, it's a little tedious, but I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do. After you've had a successful analysis, hit apply editing up here on the upper left. And we're going to save yes. And now we have a, a clip that has a, a movement map created from it. Nothing's going to happen just yet. It looks exactly the same. But what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning of the clip here, and I'm going to add an emoji right here. So this is going to be a, a freezing emoji face. Way too big, uh, but I'm going to be uh, chopping off the, the front of it and making it last only as long as the clip it's going to be you know, in and tracking. I'm going to scale down the clip by using these little adjustment parameters. I'm going to put it right above the tree to indicate, yeah, man, it's really cold out here. Now, it could be over here too, uh, but we're going to put it right above the tree just to show you how well it tracks that exact point. Um, so anyway, we have cut down the duration of the emoji to the duration of the clip that it's going to be um, residing in. I'm going to double click on the emoji and I'm going to go ahead and uh, at the beginning with my playhead all the way to the left uh, on the emoji timeline. I'm gonna go up to add object, upper left, and movement, movement map. Now I'm gonna select Colorado 3. I can do from scene beginning or from cursor position because my cursor is at the beginning of the scene, but let's do cursor position and hit okay. All right, now it has taken the um, motion tracking from the Colorado clip and applied it the, applied the motion map, the movement map to the emoji. Now let's go back to my main uh, project here and we're gonna hit play. There it is. Tracked on top of the tree, that's awesome. Very, very easy. Um, so again, we could use the same type of thing with this building. We're moving from uh, from right to left here and we do have a tree come into frame, but I'm, oh, let's see, maybe this one's easier. I'm gonna double click on the clip and find where I want to begin this movement. I think I'm gonna track the edge of the building. So maybe this intersection of the little columns and the rows here. I'm going to move the playhead back to where it just pops into frame. So right about there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and uh, I'm gonna create mo movement map. Let's call this just glass building, works for me. And I'm going to resize the actual tracking point about like this. Now, perspective on this may change a little bit. You know, if we're moving left to right, you can already see, like, the, these lines are pretty much up and down straight, and these are a hard 45-degree angle, even though in real life all of them are up and down straight. So that's just perspective for you. But uh, hopefully we can still track this point without issue. Start analysis. Yep. There we go. It's a really powerful motion tracking tool. That's awesome. All right. It's, it's left the frame so we can stop. Um, 
Now, since it has left the frame, obviously there's an error right here when it stopped successfully tracking. I'm gonna go up to the upper left, hit add keyframe, and then anything after this keyframe, I'm just gonna delete. So delete, boom. Motion tracking concludes after that point. Uh, same at the at before this. So we have a keyframe here. That means all this red where uh, the the that particular point was not visible in the frame can also be, be deleted. So now we just have the green motion tracking that we have successfully used in that intersection of lines. I'm going to hit apply editing and hit yes to uh, when it asks if I want to save. And now I can add some text. So let's go uh, let's go add uh, add object in text text from cursor position. Sure. So this is exactly where that uh, frame starts. I'm going to draw my text here. I'm just going to say glass. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of uh, creativity here, but glass building. So it's just going to be text. We're just going to use that. Uh, simple text, you know, I, I'm not going to make it too complicated here. We're just going to get the idea across of what we can do. We are going to resize this though. How about that? All right. Glass building. All right, so it's going to just hang out over here. Once that spot comes into frame, this is going to come through. So actually, maybe even further this way, something like that. All right, going to double click on text. Going to add object up here, upper left. Movement, movement map, glass building. That was really fast, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, from scene beginning and OK. So as you can see, we have our movement map applied to the text. Hey, oh yeah. All right, so as you see there, we need to do something. Um, glass building got hung up because the motion tracking uh, basically stopped. <laughs> so right about there, uh, let's see, is that the last frame? Yep, that's the last frame, at, okay, right there. So anything after that, we can either like maybe fade out if we wanted to or we can continue the motion tracking just a few more frames manually if we really wanted to, or I'm just gonna, for the time, for the sake of time and simplicity, just cut it off. Now I'm gonna show you something that I had been working on to try and get past the whole Z-axis problem. Um, I'm gonna show you, first of all, the relative success. So here we go, I was, I was tracking something down there in the creek bed, and it's text. As you can see, the text gets bigger as we get closer to the spot where it's being tracked. So that's that's good for scaling. That's perspective that we're trying to work with. Unfortunately, VSDC is not going to account for that perspective change. So you have to do that manually. And that was a pain. I had to use the Zoom tool. And then in Zoom, using this tool, uh, this is the keyframe for the zoom. So as you can see, and so down here, it's at like normal. And then by the time it gets to the end, it's at 613% of its original size. So this is how I was able to get past that and, and kind of um, do scaling on my own, like manually. But it's not. <laughs> it's it's a difficult and time-consuming process, which is why I don't, I don't suggest that you try to um, you know, track things that are moving closer to you because unless you want to mess with scale and perspective, uh, VSDC is definitely not going to do it for you and it's just going to add a lot of time to your workflow. So anyway, just want to give you an option. It can be done. It's just not that easy. So here's a, one of my videos from a month or two ago and let's just say I wanted to censor my face or someone else's face, some random person or my license plate on my car or my address on the front of my house, something that I don't want to show in the video that's moving around and somehow I need to like pixelate it. Well, we can use motion tracking to um, apply the pixelation and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not the, the foolproof way, there, it's not perfect, but Here's how you can do it with VSDC. Uh, I'm going to move the cursor to the beginning of this clip that I just imported in here. And the majority of it is me just sitting here at the desk. So it's going to be really easy to work with. So here on the left in the uh, toolbar, I'm going to select Add Free Shape right here. From cursor position, that's fine because I'm at the beginning of the clip, so that works. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle kind of across my face, just like that. On the right, in properties window, 
and it hits set the same size as the parent has. So it blows up that thing all the way to the, the, the edges of the video. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double click on free shape layer and I'm going to drag with my mouse across all four of those shape points, which represent one, two, three, four corners of this rectangle. And I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. You can also right click and hit delete, but I just hit delete on my keyboard, got rid of them all. So now we have a free shape layer that is the size of this entire video. On the upper left, all the way at the top, it says free shape, this free shape tab. Click free shape, and then uh, all the way to the uh, upper left, insert point. Now I'm gonna hit start new shape. And here's how we can, with dots, kind of draw around my face, giving myself a little bit of a buffer there, maybe a inch wide buffer around my face. And I'm gonna use the pointer tool here to kind of help myself out. And I'm going to make things a little bit less leaning to the left. Like when I'm, when I'm talking, I kind of have my head cocked a little bit to the left. I really want this to be more or less up and down. All right, now I'm gonna go back to scene. Gonna select the clip, the actual clip, not the free shape, but my clip. Right click and copy. Back to free shape. Now I'm gonna right click down here, paste. All right, now I'm gonna drag this all the way over here so that it matches up uh, vertically with the shape points. And see my head is covered with uh, the free shape. On the left, in composition mode, I'm gonna click blend, but we don't want blend, we actually want source in. So this says source in now for the composition mode. Now we have to go to video effects, filters, pixelize, and yes. And okay. And there we go, we got a mask around my face. Now it's not being tracked. So as I move my head, I kind of actually get out of the tra out of the uh, pixelation, out of the mask. We have to track this mask onto my face. Now, to save time, I've already done motion tracking on my face using my nose as the center of this uh, mo movement map. So now all we gotta do in the free shape layer, the free shape sprite, I should say, upper left, add object, movement, movement map, and I'm gonna select that one, uh, that movement map that I did. From cursor position, okay. And there we go. Now it's not perfect. You can kind of see it's kind of like, it almost looks like it's attached to the front of my face. We could probably uh, do a little bit better with uh, the movement map if we really needed to. Um, also, it might help, be, you know, when I'm talking, my head kind of turns left and right, so the perspective does change a little bit. If this was a license plate or the address of your house, you definitely wouldn't have that problem so much, uh, how I move my head like that. But the fact that I'm able to track a mask onto my face and sensor something that's moving is a pretty powerful tool. And uh, so, yeah, if you end up, you know, realizing you got something in the background in your video and you can't re-record, but you don't want that to be seen, just go ahead and put a movement map on it and, and uh, go ahead and pixelate it out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, in the comments below, type hashtag VSDC. You entered to win uh, one of these five pro license codes, one per week, uh, if you just type VS, uh, hashtag VSDC in the comments below. I'm gonna pick a winner, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply to your comments, so make sure that you got notifications turned on so that when I reply to you, you're gonna get notified and uh, you actually are able to reply and uh, send me your email address. All right, thanks so much for watching everybody. Thanks to VSDC for sponsoring this video and for giving away these uh, license codes, very nice of them. Take care everybody, stay safe, and happy video editing.